five years, wake up early to match the Prime Minister's 5.30 a.m. start. Get ready to work 18 hours a day. Find ways to get things done and quickly. Be decisive. Do not lose focus on the big picture, which is growth with jobs. That, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, is the new agenda from India's superstar Prime Minister for his recently appointed cabinet. And believe me, if this is done, it will be a fresh beginning for the country. That's all it takes, really, a will to act for the collective good of the nation. Welcome everyone to the Realty Debate of what's being hailed as an era of hope with a new government whose time starts now. We narrow our focus to what matters to us on the property show, right priced homes for every Indian and cities we can be proud of. On my panel today, India's top industry voices. Pranay Vakil, Chairman Praron Consultancy Private Limited. Ritesh Vora, Partner Real Estate IDFC Alternatives. Niranjan Hiranandani, Co-Founder and Chairman Hiranandani Group. Raj Menda, Corporate Chairman, RMZ Corp. T. Chitti Babu, Chairman and CEO of Akshaya Private Limited. And Pranav Ansal, VC and MD of Ansal API. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to go to Pranay simply because his experience has been the longest. Pranay, hopes running too high? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Uh, hopes running too high from the new superstar Prime Minister and his cabinet. Yes, lots of expectations. I think it's full of expectations and we've been waiting, waiting, waiting for two, three, four years for things to happen. I think uh, this is an opportunity which should be grabbed. I think he's about to grab it and we will be seeing a lot in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Although uh, I do feel it's not going to happen like a knee-jerk reaction. It won't happen all that suddenly but it will happen for sure over the next six months to 12 months. All right. There are a few things, I feel, Manisha, which can happen in the short run. There are a few things which can happen in the medium term and a few things probably in the longer term. All right, I'll come in back to you, Prane. Prane, I'll come back to you. Yeah. I think I just wanted an initial yeah. reaction from everybody. Niranjan Hiranandani, the last time we spoke, you said, if we don't have a change in government, we may pretty much write off our next five years. Now what? We have a new government, isn't it? So that's very exciting. I, I think it's a great time. I think it's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful, great time to be here. And I, I, I think you're going to see a huge difference. The prime minister is committed in its uh, agenda, which is the BJP agenda, which was put up, that they're going to put up 25 million houses by the year, uh, by eight years from now. Uh, which is the 75th year of Indian independence. It got to be done. It will happen. It will happen very fast. In the long run, we are all dead. And I don't want to wait to die before we achieve our objectives. So uh, I, I'm sure it will happen in the sh short run or the medium run, but certainly I'm not looking forward it to happen in the long run. No. Fair enough. So no long runs for Niranjan Hiranandani, Raj, Minda. Uh, what's your gut feel? I mean, two days, uh, we've not only seen some decisive uh, actions from the Prime Minister, we've seen hectic meetings with the SARC leaders, initial agendas being set, uh, word coming out that every minister in the cabinet has to be prepared to work for 18 hours, all the things that I said at the top of this show. How, I mean, do you think that this is the time if seized, just like, Mexico did it, and the president there brought about reforms in 12 months. We can do it as well? I am absolutely confident we can do it. I think he started off uh, extremely well, as we can see in the last few days. And I'm absolutely confident that if they involve the developers in a proactive method to, to create this housing, which is absolutely essential, if there's no doubt about it, by simply incentivizing them, I'm, I'm absolutely sure the houses can be generated with the help of the developers rather than compelling them. Just uh, partner with them and you know show them the way and they, I'm sure they'll be interested in doing the same. Mm, Chitty Babu, Absolutely. no long run, medium term and short run. How much time do you think that the, this government will need to actually start implementing all the actionable items? You know, it's very encouraging to see one more CEO in our uh, Panel, no. Typically, we are seeing a very active CEO who wants to uh, you know, start work from 5 o'clock. And we are very, very confident that definitely, see, any development, it has to definitely start with real estate. 
and I am very confident that uh, things will happen immediately and uh, start very well. Mm -hmm. Ritesh Vora, so the big question is, does real estate need special focus or do you think if we can get the top agenda right, which is essentially growth, infrastructure, investment, real estate is automatically going to benefit? No, absolutely, that's correct. I think, uh, you know, for the starting point for all of this is sentiment. I think we've already seen sentiment taking a turn for the positive in the last few days. I think once you know you have positive intent, you have positive sentiment that eggs on you know positive action by everybody. I think that's something that hopefully we will continue to see going forward as well, both from the government as well as from the private sector. And the only hope that we have is that uh, you know the government will actually uh, you know uh, focus on uh, on being an enabler, being a facilitator, focus on the right policies, focus on creating the right framework. And if all of that is done, I'm, I'm certain that uh, you know uh, the real estate sector can uh, can work wonders for uh, for the country. Okay, Pranav Ansal, you're with me here in the Delhi studio, and therefore you've got the privilege of speaking or giving the last comment before we move on to specifics. Okay, you know, uh, just before we started the show, you said yes, we've got a new minister, we've got a new cabinet, but housing is such a state subject. Even though there's a lot of excitement overall and hope with the new government, uh, you still need to see how the state and the center will align itself? Um, well, I think that always helps, but uh, real estate per se is very, very state specific. It's a state subject and states take their own decisions. But because of the, the mood of the country was so weak over the last five, especially the last two, three years, so I think positive sentiment, which everybody's talking about and experiencing should lead to good growth, good demand, and all the factors we are talking about. And real estate works with everybody growing. So I think with the whole industry growing, the mood growing, the climate, you see what's happened to the stock market, the rupee, I think already great positive sentiment. So like Mr. Hiranandani said, I think the next five years are going to be very, very good, and we should all work hard towards it and achieve the 25 million home target. All right, so I'm going to just read out the top 10 demands that my team has been able to collate. And of course, many of you have come on the show and voiced it again and again on what needs to be done with just real estate in perspective. So, of course, 2022, every Indian to have a pakka home or roof over their heads is what BJP's manifesto said. From the consumer angle, what do we have? Clearly, the buyer-consumer, whichever category the buyer or consumer might be, want a real estate regulator. The bill has been pending in Parliament. We need to see whether that's going to be pushed or not. Then the launch of REITs. I think this is an important one to inject liquidity, give industry infra status to real estate sector. I'm not so sure whether that's going to really come about or help, but I'm going to get the opinions, set up single window clearances. I think this has been the single biggest demand of the industry. Clear policies for affordable housing and, of course, to close the gap of that 19 million housing gap in low-cost housing and, of course, make land acquisition laws industry-friendly. Pranay Vakil, let's come back. Short term, what can be done? Two things. There are a number of approvals which have got stuck and pending for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Mainly, these are environmental approvals, and I think they should be cleared right away so that the infrastructure which is held up actually comes back on stream and the country is able to see the infrastructure that we've been talking about all this time. Uh, Deepak Parekh has been talking about a trillion dollars being added to, required for the infrastructure. I think this is the time to kind of make it happen and do it. But that's short term. The second thing which can happen in the short term is that if there is a reduction in the interest, it will give a huge fillip, a huge improvement to the volume of transactions that we have today. We have seen the best of the transaction when the interest rates were low. So if the government has the courage to do it and bring down the interest rate even by 50 basis points, you know, I think it will make a lot of difference. All right. I think kickstarting investments and especially projects which are stuck, there's some hope. Prakash Javedkar, in his very first media interview after he knew or got to know that he's going to take on the environment ministry, said environment will never become or come in the way, environment clearances will never come in the way of growth. So I think that's a positive start. Niranjani Ranandani, uh, do you think uh, infrastructure investments on one side, but interest rates, is that demand a valid one at this current juncture where inflation is still raining high? 
Uh, I think you have to understand that at one point of time, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, interest rates were 16.5% and we got it down to 9.5% just by a policy change. So when you're talking about an interest rate reduction of 50 basis points or 100 basis points, it's not a big deal at all if you really want to get after housing. Yes, it has to come. You have to reduce interest rates. You have to give prioritization. All you got to do is to change the priority sector, which means that today the priority sector is maximum 25 lakhs, which means lower rates of interest. You really have to bring it to 50 lakhs. It can happen, and 50 basis points is uh, easy done. Ritesh, do you think it's an easy task? I mean, I would be very skeptical about where, how quickly can we bring down the rates. You have a credit policy coming up. Do you think that the governor will bite the bullet uh, or inflation is going to be still a key concern? Sure. No. So, you know, my sense is that uh, given the overall uh, fiscal framework that we are in, uh, at least for the next, uh, you know, maybe nine months to 12 months, uh, getting a handle on the interest rates coming down is possibly something which is going to be a difficult task even for the Modi government. Uh, so, uh, so no, I think, uh, you know, possibly we are continuing uh, to be in the era where interest rates will be relatively high. But I think, uh, you know, everybody knows that interest rates are a, a cyclical item. You know, they go up and they, co they come down depending on which way the winds are blowing. Uh, so if you have, uh, you know, overall environment which is positive, which is forward looking where, you know, uh, as I said earlier, sentiments are positive and there is hope in the air, people will actually take a view that over the next 12 to 15 months interest rate cycle will actually turn. And uh, that may not be a, a showstopper for, uh, for relatively medium to long term kind of infrastructure plans or even real estate project announcements. Rajminder, would you agree that uh, interest rates are not the key things which would probably, you know, spur the action back into real estate? No, I think it's interest rates, uh, you know, as for the central government is concerned, they, they have control on the taxes, they can incentivize developers in terms of, you know, uh, if they put LIG and MIG housing into place, which is uh, part of the manifest to, you know, and just simply give a, a tax fee rebates to developers that, you know, you get, you get like, like in the uh, earlier regimes, there, there was a tax incentive for building smaller size homes. You know, these things can be easily put into place and can kickstart the whole process straight away in the short term. So you really don't have to wait for a long term agenda. This is possible in the short term itself. Mm. Pranav Ansel, cash and capital has not been easy for the sector, isn't it? Uh, and the bottlenecks are not just interest rates. There are several other issues as well. I mean, banks also don't give you money to buy land. The capital comes in only at the construction stage. Oh. By that time, 50% has to go from the developers. And those have, are those big bottlenecks? Do you think that one has to live with those and learn to do business alongside I it? I think one issue which the industry has made a lot of noise about, and all my fr friends on TV would agree, that to get us infrastructure status, mm. I think that is something which is a top priority. You mean priority. the entire real estate sector should get it or only affordable housing? No, I think the entire infrastructure should, uh, in, uh, sector should get it. Why? See, but why? We, it's a profit-making business. Every business is profit-making business. Okay, mm. but tell me one business which is not profit-making. So is, if you build a road, it's for profit. If you build a power station, it's for profit. Whereas for a developer, he does everything. We do a mix of roads. We do infrastructure. We do power. Why is it then person who does everything does not get the status? And housing for people is in as much as demand as anything else. Maybe a bigger priority for the government. Without getting us infrastructure status, we will never get all the benefits or all the fiscal you know, rates or benefits which we are talking about. And second important factor is for affordable housing, we earlier used to have income tax rebates because lands are so expensive, there are no benefits, there is no incentive for developers to do affordable housing. So that's why affordable housing is always discussed but never implemented because it doesn't make sense for a developer to do it because there is no incentive given to the developer and neither does the government do it. So the demand only increases. Demand only increases. I'm going to take a very quick short break, but I think this is worth discussing. There are two ends of the spectrum. Do you give entire real estate sector infrastructure status? Because how many more industries are going to clamor for that status then? There are fiscal benefits attached to it. Or do you at least make a start with giving affordable housing and infrastructure industry status. We'll be right back. We're discussing the agenda for the new government when it comes to better living, better homes, a home for all Indians, and of course, cities that we can be proud of.